What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. This is gonna be the first video in a series on reef tanks, specifically Pico reef tanks. If you don't know anything about salt water, that's fine. This is perfect for you. I'm gonna show you how you can set up your own nano reef tank under three gallons. You can keep some corals, some nice invertebrates, some macroalgae to be cheap and easy to maintain. There's a lot of myths on this subject that it's very difficult to do and you need to be very experienced to get into it. And hopefully over this video series, we're gonna dispel some of those together and I'll teach you how to make up your own Pico Reef Tank. All right, let's get to it. I got inspired to do this project after visiting family in Jamaica. I got to swim off the coast and look at different kinds of coral in their natural habitat along the reef. It was really amazing. Coral, if you don't know, is made up of small polyps, which consist of a mouth with tentacles around it. It's actually a predator. Uh, it stings and eats its prey, but certain corals have a symbiotic relationship with algae that lives within their cells and allows those corals to actually engage in photosynthesis and convert sunlight into energy. I really recommend these if you're doing a small reef tank because then you don't have to worry about feeding or anything like that, and it makes things a lot more convenient. Another thing you have to understand is the nitrogen cycle. So we have an input of energy to the system in the form of light, which nourishes the coral, the macroalgae, and algae. If you have fish, then you're also inputting energy in the form of the fish food. Um, if you have organisms like snails, crabs, and starfish, they can eat the algae and they produce ammonia as waste, which is toxic. If you're feeding your fish, your fish will also be producing toxic ammonia. Beneficial bacteria living in your sand and along the rocks will convert this ammonia into nitrates. And the nitrates can be used as nourishment for coral, macroalgae, and the algae. You wanna keep all these things in delicate balance so that your invertebrates stay alive, algae doesn't take over and cover your entire tank, and there's not high amounts of ammonia, which is toxic, killing off everything in your tank. For my reef tank, I'm using a one and a half gallon bowl, and the only electronics I have is this fountain pump. You can get one on Amazon for about six or seven bucks, and that's to keep the water circulating. For hardscape, I'm using a piece of aquarium live rock. This is a special rock that has tons of surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow. And actually mine I got from an existing tank, so it already is seeded with all of that beneficial bacteria, which makes it cycle much faster. Next, I added the sand. I added the sand second to the rock so that the rock is touching the base and won't be shifting around in the sand when my crabs are digging and stuff. Next, I added my salt water. This is just distilled water and aquarium salt mix. I was going for around 35 parts per trillion in terms of my salinity, but that can vary slightly depending on what organisms you wanna keep. After two weeks of cycling the tank, we're ready to add our first invertebrates, which are the hermit crabs. Uh, these guys are super small and active. I love having them in the tank. I'm drip acclimating them right now, which means I have a siphon going from the tank to the water that they previously came in, and that siphon is exposing them to my tank water at a very, very slow rate so they can get used to it. I also got some green macroalgae, which will help keep the tank clean as well and clean up that extra nutrients, which I'm just putting into the background. I really like the way that it looks, but it does grow pretty quickly, so I'll have to trim it. I started off with two very low maintenance corals. On the left, we have a large Xenia coral, and on the right, we have some zoanthid corals. Both of these guys are very tolerant of a wide variety of water parameters. They're pretty difficult to kill, so I thought they'd be perfect to start off with in this tiny tank. I've also got some Asteria starfish, which a lot of people consider to be a pest in this tank, but I love the way they look, so I don't mind. All the corals took a little over a month to start adapting and coloring up again, but in the meantime, it was a lot of fun to watch the hermit crabs uh, doing their thing in the tank, and they move around a lot, they're super active. I gave them some shells that I found at the beach, and it was really fun to watch them uh, not only explore the different shells that I had found, but even select some, and I'd never seen a hermit crab change shells before. But that is what it looks like. Super weird, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please hit like. And if you want to see how this tank has progressed, subscribe to see the next episode where I'll be adding red macroalgae and some new fun corals. Uh, just the whole tank has changed a lot over the last couple months. So it's really, really cool to see that evolution. I'll also be going over uh, maintenance tips and care for a small Pico reef like this in the rest of the series. So if you want to see that, hit subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching.